want to jump over to the DC project. So could you explain mm -hmm. how you got involved, why, and what is the DC project? I'm interested to know. So my friend, Diana Muller, <clears throat> excuse me, I just, pardon me one second. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> Time out. Okay. So my friend Diana Muller was meeting with her member of Congress from the state of Oklahoma in D.C. And she thought, wouldn't this be great if there was a one woman from every state who went into her congressman's office and talked about our gun rights? How can we make that happen? Because you have to be a constituent to have these meetings. And so she reached out to us um, because we have women in all 50 states. And so she asked if I could help her find these women who were willing to go to DC. So we called it the, she called it the DC project. And so we've been doing that for several years now, I think six years, that's five years. It's been a while. We've been doing it a long time. So mm -hmm. um, once a year we go to DC and we bring a group of women and we wear teal uh, to counteract the visual of the moms demand action groups, because so many women are there with their red shirts demanding that legislators take our rights. And it's really important that the women on our side of the aisle speak up about that. So I go into the congressman's office and they think we're there to talk about gun violence. And I tell them that the women that demand to take our rights don't speak for women like me. And there's moms mm -hmm. out there like me that just wanna protect our families. And so we're able to have that conversation. And it's so important that women lead their voice to that cause because it's a different perspective. When women can talk about the right to protect myself and my family, it's it really pulls at the heartstrings of the other side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, it gets us into deeper and more meaningful conversation than um, kind of the old school, you know, out of my cold dead hands that, that doesn't really fly anymore. So um, mm -hmm. being passionate about protecting your children uh, seems to be um, the message that resonates with a lot more people. So we're hoping to get a lot more voices to share that with us. Yeah, that was one thing that I was going to ask you about was how do you advocate for people to reach out to family or friends who may not be gun friendly? And it sounds like that you already gave me that answer. But that, that's <laughs> well, there's really, a lot of we really have a lot of resources. About. Yeah. And DC Project, we put together some resources, some talking points. Um, we put out a really great flyer for Thanksgiving. So if you're going to Thanksgiving dinner with your anti-gun friends, here are some things to talk about. <laughs> your anti-gun mm -hmm. family, here are some topics on how you can uh, maybe change some hearts and minds over the dinner table. Because I've always said that marksmanship skills are earned at the range, but hearts and minds are changed at the dinner table. And that's where we need to have those meaningful conversations. And and it's really about planting seeds. You know, I was mm -hmm. anti-gun for most of my life, uh, strongly, vocally anti-gun for most of my life. And um, I found that the best way to to open other people's eyes is just to plant seeds, talk about my passion, talk about the love I have for my children. It's not about the love I have for my guns. It's the love I have for the people in my life. And that's why I have the guns. And once you can kind of frame that conversation for them, it, it changes the narrative. Well, I think it's a lot about finding common ground, right? And Absolutely. there's not a lot of that going on right now. There needs to be more of it, I believe. So I think what you're doing is so important and so valuable. 